Good afternoon. My name is Professor Adrian Banning. I work at the University Hospital in Oxford. This afternoon, I'm going to talk about pot kiss pot or pot side pot. These are my financial disclosures. So when we consider this question of what is the optimal sequence, pot kiss pot or pot side pot, I think we have to try and remember what it is we're trying to achieve. This diagram illustrates the important issues which we face when trying to deploy a single stent optimally. Clearly, we need full expansion of the stent with no metallic narrowing and no malapposition, particularly at the career. Ideally, we'd have an adequate side branch opening with no metallic carina, but what we are trying to achieve is some side protrusion of the stent into the side branch, as you can see on this bench diagram here. Importantly, we also want to achieve minimal ellipticity in the proximal branch too, as we believe this gives the best flow dynamics. Most of the audience will understand why we do pot, and of course the main reason is to optimize this result in the main branch, to increase the area and reduce malapposition. But I'm also going to talk about the role of pot in preventing guide wire tracking behind the stent during recross, which is an important consideration when we consider the risk of longitudinal distortion of the stent, and then focus a little on this question of how we reduce obstruction to the side branch. So pot is the inflation of a non-compliant balloon just proximal to the carina. It's designed to optimize expansion in the main branch and push struts across the side branch orifice. And you can see that in this cartoon generated by the European Bifurcation Club and published in your intervention. We're ultimately trying to deploy the stent optimally with the branch of the stent, so the edge of the stent moved across the side branch, as you can see here. So why do we kiss? Well, everybody in this audience knows that. We're trying to re recreate the carina and prevent carina shift. The mechanism of carina shift is seen in this elegant intravascular ultrasound image generated by Dr. Koo. So that by kissing, we recreate the carina. However, if we do that too aggressively, we can generate this bottleneck effect illustrated by Nick Foyne and actually get main vessel proximal edge malapposition, as you see in this OCT generated by Professor Morisato. So that with final kissing, we risk deforming the main branch lumen and ended up with an overexpanded asymmetric overstretch. The main branch lumen may be oval rather than elliptical, and there is this risk of proximal main branch under expansion. All of these we wish to avoid. So proximal pot on the bench looks like this. You can see the main branch fully expanded and the side branch orifice seen beautifully in this micro radiogram generated by Francesco Pozzotta. So, so far so good. Pot's clearly a good thing in the main branch. But what is repot versus pot? What's final pot and procedural pot? Well, procedural pot is used to prevent guide wire tracking behind the stent during recross. This is obviously going to be crucial, particularly in a two stent procedure. And this is a way of avoiding longitudinal distortion. Ultimately, we're looking to reduce obstruction in the side branch too, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But using pot during the procedure and making sure that that pot is done accurately was nicely demonstrated in this paper in Euro Intervention, where we saw the importance of a distal wire crossing in a clot stenting technique and the use of OCT to demonstrate where the wire is and prevent stent deformation. So this issue of optimization of side branch scaffolding Let's look at that now. Where should the final pot balloon be placed? In the left-hand side, you see a cartoon of a pot balloon. I'd like you to consider, is that position too deep? In order to achieve what we want on the right-hand side, where we can see that the diameter of the side branch stent needs to be different to the diameter of the main branch stent. Francois Derome and his group have done a lot of work on the optimal sequence of potting. And this important paper in your intervention illustrated the potential advantages of a pot side repot technique. And you can see in the cartoon on the left hand side the sequence that they used. Careful OCT was used using this uh, sequence of procedures. And it demonstrated in 106 patients that using the pot side pot technique, you could reduce side branch obstruction, have less malapposition and improved ellipticity using their technique. Now I would note, ask you to note where the final pot balloon is in cartoon E. You can see it's really quite distal. They're now taking that technique into other centers and the Cabriolet study will look at 500 patients using this repot technique to see whether they can reproduce these results in a larger patient cohort. Within the last year, there's been a number of bench studies looking at this issue of the distal position of the pot balloon, where the shoulder of the balloon should be. There's a paper by John Ormiston and his group, paper from Francesco Pizzotta, and also a paper by Derry May and Gerard Fine, which I'm going to discuss all three of those papers before I conclude. So this is the paper from John Ormiston and his group. This initial cartoon looks at the consequences of a proximal wire cross, and it shows that when the wire crosses proximally, 
as you can see in the third panel there, that the final pot actually will reduce the side branch orifice size. So accuracy with regard to the position of our cross is important, but as importantly is the position of the pot balloon. And you see that nicely in cartoon A here at the top. You see the distal recross that actually the stent has been pushed across the side branch orifice, reducing the side branch orifice as a consequence. This is in comparison to the cartoon in B, where you see a more distal position, and actually the side branch orifice is marginally improved, or at least preserved. And when we look at a series of those procedures in the graphic on the right-hand side, you can see that the distal pot position resulted in a 43% reduction in the side branch area, as compared to the more proximal position, which preserved or slightly increased it by 4%. Francesco Pazzotta and his group have also looked at this same question, looking at the traditional pot position, a proximal pot position, and a distal pot position. And you see that on the right-hand side, the consequences of where that scaffold is across the side branch. Ultimately, in this bench study, he concluded that a mid-position pot was optimal, with the balloon marker preferentially placed at the carina cut plane, and that this was the best way of preventing obstruction to the side branch orifice, and also obtaining the best elliptic ratio within the main vessel. Finally, Fine and his colleagues have looked at a similar technique using an experimental bench study, looking at proximal, mid, and distal pot, and concluded that the shoulder positioning during pot was crucial, which is what we've been talking about, and that the best position for the pot balloon was the Karina cut plane. So how should we put this all together? Well, ultimately, it is clear that there's a nuance here. There's a a bit of debate, but I have to say that if I can't decide where to place the pot balloon on a cartoon or on the bench, how possibly can I be that accurate in a three-dimensional heart which is moving all the time? So I personally feel that this risk of too distal a pot needs to be considered, and clearly we need to spend more time setting ourselves up to get the proper geometry of the vessel organized so we can see where the balloon is relative to the bifurcation before we do our pot, and I suspect that that is underappreciated in many labs. Importantly, we need to make sure that our pot balloon is long enough to optimize the stent proximal to the bifurcation throughout its length. I think we commonly underdilate the main branch proximally, and that should obviously be avoided. But I hope I've illustrated to you the debate about the pot position, and that from my perspective, potting too distal is not likely to be beneficial. So finally, the take home messages. The result in the main branch, in my opinion, is always going to be more important than the result in the side branch. Pot should be part of every bifurcation interventional technique, including a single stent, and that is the best way of us respecting the fractal geometry. In any two-step technique, procedural pot reduces the risk of abluminal wiring, and we should do it. In a clot, there'll be three pot procedures, which makes the clot procedure safest, and two, in a decay crush. And for final pot, especially, don't pot too distally, as ultimately that's going to compromise the orifice of the side branch. Thank you very much.